The advancement flap is drawn so that the length is approximately two and a half to three times longer than the width. Care is taken to stay in the subcutaneous plane during the excision of the lesion. Countertraction is helpful during incision and excision. The scissors can be used to undermine as well as to cut the deep layers of the soft tissues. The skin incisions themselves should be made with a sharp knife. Care is taken to incise perpendicular to the skin edges. Again, the entire flap is undermined in a layer between the skin and the deeper subcutaneous tissues. Undermining is continued beyond the extent of the dissection by one to two centimeters in all directions. This allows for easier flap mobility. The first suture is placed in the center of the flap and out the central aspect of the defect. This is tied with a hand tie and a surgeon's knot to prevent slipping of the knot. By keeping constant tension on the sutures, one can prevent tying an air knot. The suture is cut with a small tail that prevents unwinding of the suture material over time. The corner sutures are placed next, since they are the other primary sites of tension in this flap design. Here an instrument tie is being utilized for the corner stitch. Again, a surgeon's knot is put down on the first throw, and now we have a problem of unequal skin edge length. The skin edge is longer than the flap edge. We will then close this with the principles of halving. The first or central suture is placed in the middle of the inferior edge of the flap and in the middle of the corresponding skin flap. The two halves on either side are still uneven, but less so. Subsequent sutures are then placed so that it splits the difference between the previous sutures until enough sutures are placed for adequate closure. In this way, the redundant skin of the lower flap is spread evenly across the entire wound closure and results in a smooth wound edge. On the upper flap, we have closed it so that the skin is closed in an even manner, resulting in a standing cone deformity at the inferior aspect of the flap. The standing cone deformity excision is always done away from the flap pedicle. A single hook is placed in the dog ear, and the triangle that is formed can easily be seen. It is then marked with a surgical marking pen. An incision is made perpendicular to the skin edge so that we can mark out the point of a triangle. Undermining is done under this dog ear deformity. The skin is transposed back until one can exactly see how much skin is needed to be trimmed. The skin is then trimmed and the flap is inset. This flap is then sutured into place and the dog ear deformity is resolved.